Hello everybody, it's your man's TZ, and I'm back with here. I'm back here with you today to discuss uh, the truth, and as it relates to our society. So we live in a culture in America, especially today, where you can see a shift. You can see a shift into lawlessness. You can see a shift into uh, delusion. In a sense, like, I've been observing life and stuff like that. And just everyday life, I've been observing. And I recognize how people respond to the truth. I see people's relationship with the truth. I see people, how they respond to deceit. You know what I'm saying? I see how people respond to lies. And honestly, it's sickening. Because we live in a society today that champions liars right that uh we live in a society that comforts liars we live in a society that comforts lies you know we uh we champion the lie and as a society we we uh we condemn the truth you know what i mean everybody's pretty much heard of cancel culture you have people that lose their jobs you know what I mean? You have people whose reputation is tarnished and dragged in the media. You have uh, you have people that are scorned or exiled from uh, from certain groups or forms of media by uh, by being banned from news stations and things like that. If they speak their honest opinion, which may also happen to be the truth. And I'm sitting back and I'm wondering why is that the way it is and it's obvious that in the bible satan is described as the god of this world and we know that things will get increasingly worse before they get better um because all of these things were foretold in the bible um it talks about how uh in the last days people will be given over to a strong delusion you know it it says that in the last days, evil will be viewed as good and good will be viewed as evil, right? So uh, that means that in the last days, lies will be viewed as and accepted as truth and lies will be acceptable in society and truth will be outcast. Truth will be, uh, truth will be looked down upon in society. And as wicked as that is, and although that is the expectation, because I know what the Bible says, it still baffles. It still baffles me how people can be okay with that. And the and the whole purpose of this video is for me to call um, attention to that truth. Uh, the whole purpose of this video is for me to outline that so we can be aware of delusion. So that way we don't fall victim to um, the God of this world and Satan's devices. You know what I'm saying? Satan's devices that are meant to deceive us. So what we need to do as a people and as a society is begin to love the truth again. There was a time when there was a time when uh, when the truth when the truth was the norm. You know what I mean? Even even 15 years ago in grade school, and I'm not even that old, I'm just 22 years old, but 15 years in grade school, right? Uh, an example would be they, the teachers taught us in science class, in biology class that, hey, there's man and there's woman, there's male and there's female. You know, if you got a penis and testicles, you a male. If you got a vagina and a uterus, you're, you're a female, you know what I mean? It wasn't no debate. It was truth in the simplicity. But like I said, the God of this world is here to pervert things. The God of this world is here to bring upon strong delusions. So now we have a whole course that young, impressionable individuals in college can take and measure in called gender studies that basically, that basically teaches them a lie that there's an infinite amount of genders, that there's more than two genders. And what sane, 
state of mind is that accepted as truth. You know what I'm saying? That is a complete lie from the pits of hell. And that's not acceptable. It's just not right. You know what I'm saying? But if but if I come out and say these things, I'm going to be viewed as a bigot, misogynistic. Uh, I'll get canceled. My job will be on the line. All these different things. I'll be looked at as a uh, homophobic, transphobic, all this different crap that don't make no sense. For what? For speaking the truth? That only a man and a woman can naturally come together to procreate and produce a child? Since when? Why should I feel wrong about that? You know what I'm saying? Why should I be quiet about that? And I'm not going to be because it's not right. You know what I'm saying? The truth, the truth will always stand. Let me give you a verse. In 2 Corinthians 13, 8, it says, for we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Now, the world will come against you and the world will do all these things to you to try to shut you up, to try to tame your tongue. You know what I'm saying? For you to just fall in line with all the lies. They want to take away your common sense. They want to take away your logic. This is the worst. This is the most ignorant and dumb generation there has there has been in recent memory. You know what I'm saying? Like we're technologically advanced, but we're logically, historically, and theoretically, and also spiritually incompetent. You know what I mean? We'll take any lie, and if it makes us feel good, attach to it. And then not only will we attach to it, but we'll perpetuate it. And we'll also convict and scorn others for disagreeing. And standing on truth. But in this verse, 2 Corinthians 13, 8, it says, For we can do nothing against the truth. In actuality, all these people can come against you for telling the truth, but they actually can't change the truth. And they also will have to answer for perpetuating lies. We all must stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And that is my motivation to tell the truth. I don't need any more motivation to tell the truth. You know what I'm saying? The motivation for me to tell the truth is the knowledge that I will stand before a holy God one day and give an account for what for what I taught my wife, give an account for what I taught my children, give an account for the um, for the influence for the realm of people that the Lord has put me around. Was I a truthful man to them? Did I live a life that exemplified truth? So these people can police the truth as much as they want. You know what I'm saying? And they could pervert the truth as much as they want. But the truth is always going to be a truth because in actuality, we can do nothing against the truth. The only thing we can, the only thing that we can do is we can promote the truth. That's the only effective thing that we can do. So I'm calling all people to loop, to, uh, to rehabilitate the faculty in your mind that, uh, that judges whether something is, is a truth or a lie. And in all good conscience, when you measure whether something is a truth or a lie, be real with yourself and do not be afraid. Do not be coerced into perpetuating delusion. Okay? Because the reason why our society is the way it is, the reason why the world is in complete chaos is because we have accepted lies as truth and we have uh and we have cast down the truth as though they were lies you know in john 8 32 the bible says that we shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free jesus is the way the truth and the life and no one comes unto the father except through him the problem is this generation is so corrupt this generation is so lost. You know what I'm saying? This generation has no morals. This generation has no sense of direction. This generation has no sense of who God really is. That's why we're living in lawlessness. You know what I'm saying? That's why we got men running around here acting and pretending to be women. You got males, I should say, because they're not acting as men. You got males running around here wanting to be women. And you got females running around here wanting to be males. 
You know what I'm saying? You got uh you got people that they scream for justice, but it's ironic the fact that they overlook the truths. Bro, it's just it's insane. It's insane. This generation is allergic to the truth. This generation does not like to hear the truth. I had a conversation with my coworker the other day, and it highlighted something to me last week. Uh, I was listening to I was listening to a uh, a sermon, and in the sermon, uh, the pastor was mentioning the LGBT stuff because that's a huge thing these days, and um, my coworker happened to walk in the room when I was watching it, and you know how in a professional environment you're supposed to. Uh, you're supposed to not discuss politics and stuff like that that could offend people, right? So uh, he walked in, and I asked him. I said, "Bro, what you think about this? Uh, what you think about this transgender stuff? Do you think that there's more than one gender? That do you think that there's more than two genders?" And his facial expression and his body language was like, "Uh." And that told me everything. I just observed that and I was like, bro, so you know the truth, but you suppressing the truth for fear of consequence. You need to check your spirit, bro, because you operating as a weak man. You operating as a weak man, bro. You being a beta male, bro, because you're supposed to love the truth. You're supposed to perpetuate the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. The truth will set you free. You living in a lie, bro. That's the reason why he couldn't forthright tell me. It's because the lie has him constrained. So in order to break those chains of the lie, you have to promote the truth. Tell the truth. Because people need to hear the truth. Bro, Satan has deceived people. So what we need to do as a people is we need to come back. To our Father, we need to come back to God. We need to come back to God. You know what I'm saying? Like they have people, they have pastors, they have people that call themselves pastors these days that uh, they promote something called an inclusivity gospel. They promote something called an inclusivity gospel, basically where they start churches. To uh, they start churches to uh, cater to the likeness and the ideals of uh, of LGBT people, and it's like, bro, you gonna have to give an account for for lying to these people, telling them that God thinks that homosexuality and all that extra stuff is okay, because it's not. It's simply not. We need. To champion the truth again. Make America love the truth again. Make America love the truth again. And it's not anything against the human being themselves. Okay? The truth cuts at the spirit. The truth is a double-edged sword. The truth cuts at the spirit. Right? It's not that the person committing the homosexuality or the person that's... Uh, Perpetuating the lie is beyond salvation. It's not that they uh, it's not that they themselves should be hated for what they are indulging in, but they must know that that behavior is not acceptable in the eyes of God. And it takes the children of God to be real with them and not afraid of criticism and not afraid of the consequences that man may oppose may um impose on them. To tell them the truth, because in telling them the truth, their soul may possibly be saved. And that's the thing that we have to keep in the forefront of our mind when we're dealing with these types of individuals. Okay? We must stop being afraid. We must stop being afraid to tell the truth. My coworker knew it was two genders. He could look down in his pants. He has a wife. He could look down in his pants and see one thing. And then he could look at in his wife's pants and see a totally different thing and have an understanding, a basic simplicity, a basic understanding of, okay, these are the two genders. 
and him and his wife mate, and he has a child. That's how it goes. But he was afraid to say that because of the climate of lies that we are living in. Because he didn't want to be, he didn't want to be opposed. Let me tell you something about the truth. It will offend people. It will offend people. That's the point of the truth. The truth will offend people. I made the analogy to my wife the other day that the truth is like a young lady. The truth is like a young lady that is not dolled up. She has no makeup. She has no hair extensions. She has no fake boobs. She's just a natural, beautiful woman. That's the truth. Simple. Simple. Don't need no dressing up to make it attractive. Okay? A natural woman. Um, I'm making the comparison between that natural woman that don't need all that extra dressing up to the truth. Because it's simple yet effective in its purpose to attract man, okay? A lie in these delusions that these people are promoting these days is like a woman that has to have all the eyebrows and the in the um the eyelash extensions and the makeup and you know the fake body with the plastic surgery and all that. I'm not saying that that's evil or good. I'm just saying that uh, I'm just saying that all that extra stuff in order to increase the attractiveness to that individual is like a lie. You're living in a lie, right? Like that's not who you really are. That's not what you really are. That's not the natural you. And it's the same thing with a lie. They got to dress the lie up with so much stuff in order to make it attractive to the masses of people. You know what I'm saying? The whole reason behind this, um, behind the man starting, behind the people starting the uh, the inclusivity churches that accept uh, gayness, saying that God uh, that God was a feminist, and saying that uh, saying that uh, they all oh, kind of crazy stuff. They say that God's a feminist, and they say that uh, God um, wants people to be LGBT, and He don't mind that. No, bro, no. God says. An effeminate man or a homosexual man or a homosexual woman, whatever, homosexuality will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's what this Bible say, bro. Where my Bible is? That's what this Bible say. So it's up to us to know what the truth is so that when we hear some lies, when we hear delusions, when we hear deceit, we can know it. You know what I'm saying? Because we have studied the truth. Can't nobody just... Can't nobody just uh, lie to us and have us go along with it. That's the whole purpose of this verse. 2 Timothy 2.15 that says, Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You study this thing to show yourself approved, so that way when somebody come at you with some foolishness, that way when somebody come at you with some lies, you can, you can measure the lies that they trying to tell you against the word of God and say, brother, you lying. That ain't true. That ain't true. That inclusivity stuff is not true. Okay. And because it ain't true, I'm going to give you the truth and it's going to offend you and you might hate my guts, but I'd rather you hate my guts and me plant a seed of actual truth in your life so that you may have a chance at salvation. That's how that goes. That's how that goes, bruh. All right. That is how that goes. So, um, it's, it's amazing to me how we perpetuate these lies, bro. We shouldn't do that. I'm going to read it to you right here. And look, this video is not me hating on gay people. Like I said, it's not the man. It's the sin. Okay? We just can't accept the sin as truth. We shouldn't do that. And it's loving somebody to tell them the truth. Now, see, if I were to close, if I were to be closed mouthed, 
while knowing the truth. If I if I uh if I conceal the truth for somebody, that's bad. Concealing the truth when you know the truth, when somebody is on their way to destruction, bro, that's worse than that's worse than actually ignorantly leading them down the road of lies. So look at this. In 1 Corinthians 6, 9, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteousness, that the unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, saying, Don't let these people lie to you. Don't let the world lie to you. Don't let the devil lie to you. Don't let these uh these fake pastors lie to you. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, meaning homosexual, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. So it's up to us to know the truth so that way when we hear a lie, we do not perpetuate it and we do not take it as fact, okay? Look, man, I love y'all. That's why I'm telling y'all the truth. If you see this video, it's in love that I come to you, okay? And as a man, I won't be able to look my child in the eye and teach my child the right way and teach my child how to conduct himself if I'm living in a lie, if I'm accepting a lie. I would be less than a father. I would be less than a husband because my first responsibility as a father and my first responsibility as a husband is to raise up my family in the way that they should go. You know what I'm saying? Because as a man, I'm created in the image and likeness of a holy God. So therefore, I want to imitate him so that my family can imitate me, which would make them in turn imitate him. And that's the whole purpose of life, man. It's with love and peace that I come to y'all. Y'all be blessed. Y'all love the truth, y'all. Love the truth and speak up about the truth, okay? Don't coddle anybody's feelings, all right? We live in a soft, weak culture. We need the truth. We need men to stand up and be men again, okay? I love y'all, man. Y'all be blessed.